73 from Airsoft and Survival and today I want to talk to you about dehydration. It's coming into the summer time now, places are getting hot and like here in Japan, the summer's really coming in hard. Soon as the humidity here is going to get up to 100% and we'll be sweating like anything. Dehydration is a big problem and a big killer for a lot of places and a lot of people, um, especially if people like outdoor sports like myself. I like to do a lot of hiking, I like also to play airsoft, which in the summertime can be quite taxing on the body when you need to take in a lot of fluids. How much water should you drink? Well, it depends on your size and it depends on how warm the day is. Your body's made up of 75% water um, and depending on how much you actually weigh will actually depend on how much you actually sweat. And that will also then correspond to how much water you need to intake to balance it out. A good indicator of when you have the beginnings of dehydration is actually you find that you're not actually urinating as often as you should do and that when you do urinate that your urine is actually quite yellow in colour and quite foul smelling. This is because your body is trying to preserve as much water in it as possible. Um, and so your urine is not diluted down with that extra water. When your body starts to try and keep as much moisture in it as possible, what it will do is then actually make your blood vessels contract and pump, your water, uh, pump the blood around your body a lot faster, so your heart rate will go up. Your skin colour will actually go very white because the blood has been sucked away from the outer extremities of your skin and your skin will become pale and clammy. One of the other symptoms of when you actually have dehydration coming on, um, you will also then start to, feel, uh, to sweat a lot because your body is actually trying to cool itself down by sweating, keep your inner core to a certain temperature. This will then also lead to headaches, dizziness and nausea and the feeling of actually wanting to get sick. Then of course you'll become listless, weak and then finally turn into a, you'll come into a coma and in a coma state then it's the worst part you could be in because that means you're basically dying completely. Um, basically what's happened then is that your body has retracted, retracted all the blood from your uh, external organs such as your brain, your muscles, your fingers, your legs, your liver and is trying to keep it just to the bare minimum but of course by that stage it's too late and your body is dying. If you do have a heat stroke and you are suffering from dehydration one of the best things you can do is to get into a shade like we are at the moment, make sure you wear a hat, cool yourself down and try to get fluids back into your body. Now just drinking water alone doesn't always work Actually, if you drink too much water all at once, well, that will also make you sick. Um, it will give you what's called swamp fever. Um, and people have actually known to drown themselves by trying to drink too much water. Other good ways of actually getting fluids back into your body is such things as like ice pops or popsicles, any type of clear soup. Um, things like that can also be taken to rehydrate you. Try not to drink coffee. Coffee is actually not very good for rehydration. Um, here in Japan people like to drink tea, especially mugicha, which is a type of barley tea. These things are actually a lot better for rehydrating you. Any type of sports drink as well is actually really good since they will also have glucose in it, a type of sugar which your body actually needs to help regenerate. So just be mindful these warmer days coming out that you bring a lot more water with you and that you keep yourself well hydrated. If you are sweating a lot, you should be drinking a lot. So. My advice is that when you go hiking, make sure you bring adequate amount of water with you. Um, instead of bringing this canteen, which I've had for a very long time, actually since I was a little kid I've had this, so where it came from I'm not too sure, but it's a aluminium construction, um, it's a kind of a Chinese bottle design. It takes about two quarts of water, actually it contains a lot of water. What's great about this is that in an emergency if I need to, I can actually boil the water in this straight in the bottle because of its aluminium design. <coughs> also just bringing a pet bottle, this is about 500 milliliters of water which you, um, really this is not enough on its own for one day if you're going hiking or outdoors, um, so at least have 
other type switcher. This is another bottle I've had for a long time. Um, as you can see, it's by Low Alpine. It's one of their sports bottles. I used to actually have two of these. What happened to do? I'm not too sure. Uh, I do have a nice little pouch that comes in. Um, it has a pretty good suitable lid and a sports type pop up piece on it. Now, I don't actually like this bottle very much. Um, one of the reasons being is that it does tend to leak a little bit and the taste coming out of the rubberized piece on the top is not the nicest in the world. Um, if I can, I try not to drink from it too often, but it's just nice to know I have the water with me. What I do like to redo, reuse is the pet bottles that we can get quite easily here in Japan. Um, we can also buy these little, little covers to keep them cool in the summertime and stop them sweating too much. And again, they also have a handy little belt loops on it. Hope you like this video. Hope it's been helpful. Please like and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. And please remember, be prepared.